Streaming live across the country, tackling the topics everyone is talking about online. Share, engage, and interact. This is News Feed Now. Good Monday, 1030 is your time, our brand new time slot for News Feed Now. Start at 1030 from here until forever. But of course, you can always watch us in syndication, so you can click on this website anytime you want. Watch any news feed now right at your fingertips. Over the weekend, the news was the same as the news from last week, and this is important stuff, folks. The coronavirus continues to make headlines. Last week, I was in Colorado as the news of cancellation after cancellation came out. It continued over the weekend as more states closed schools. The president trying his best to calm folks, saying it will pass, but most of us are wondering when it will pass. Right now, businesses, schools, government, and sports are preparing for the future with limited folks around, or in some cases, nobody around. Of course, sports being canceled, churches being canceled. Much more on the coronavirus coming up, but we start with a tragedy out of southwest Missouri. An officer and four others are killed in a shooting. At least two were injured. It all happened at a gas station in Springfield. Now, the suspect was responsible for maybe other shootings in the area, and this was kind of considered an roaming active shooter. Officer Christopher Wall suffered a gunshot wound and unfortunately passed away at the hospital. Officer Overton sustained life, non-life threatening injuries and is being treated at a local hospital. All right, let's go live now to Springfield, Missouri. Lauren Barnes joins us. Uh, Lauren, this is not easy news for any of us to take uh, as law enforcement puts themselves right there on the front line. What can you tell us this morning? Well, good morning. Um, Springfield police received reports um, just after midnight last night of someone entering a come and go with a gun. That suspect began firing at employees and customers inside of that come and go. Now, Officer Christopher Walsh died in the shooting. He was with Springfield Police Department for three years. So I'm going to step out so you guys can take a look. This is an ongoing active crime scene. Now, two others are in the hospital with injuries, including SPD officer Josiah Overton, whose injuries are non-life threatening. The gunman also died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. This is an ongoing situation. Police Chief Paul Williams said officers are dealing with multiple crime scenes as well as grief from losing a fellow officer. Again, right now, as you can see behind us, they are continuing this investigation. It's just a sad morning for Springfield community, for officers, for everyone here um, that, you know, had to be involved in this situation. It's just a sad morning for the Springfield community. So much. We appreciate you taking the time. The number of coronavirus cases in the United States is top 3,000, claiming the lives of more than 60 people. Many schools and businesses are closing their doors to curb the spread of the virus, leaving millions of Americans adjusting to life during this pandemic. David Daniel has a look. For a while, life is not going to be the way it used to be in the United States. We have to just accept that if we want to do what's best for the American public. Empty shelves, canceled events, closed schools, and shuttered businesses. They're closing? Yes, next Tuesday. Okay, the last thing I want to be when the end of the world comes is sober. Everyday life is on hold in some parts of the country as health officials urge people to work from home, avoid air travel, and practice social distancing, simply staying away from crowded public spaces. We are clearly going to have more infections. There's going to be more problems uh, with regard to morbidity and mortality. The challenge we have right now is how do we blunt that? drive through testing sites are popping up in parts of the country. In several cities and states, bans against large public gatherings are in effect. People sometimes think that you're overreacting. I like it when people are thinking I'm overreacting because that means we're doing it just right. While state and federal health agencies work around the clock to administer more tests and treat the growing number of patients, many Americans are just trying to stay positive as they adjust to the new normal. Be careful, be safe, but don't be scared. Live your life. Don't be afraid. I'm David Daniel reporting. David, thanks so much. Let's go to New Orleans, Louisiana. Kurt Sprague is there. 
Kurt, uh, I was looking at the numbers for Louisiana, and New Orleans carrying the brunt of that with, uh, if I look at the bubble right, more than 70. Fill us in on exactly how things are happening down in New Orleans when it comes to the coronavirus. I think you bring up a great point there, and that is the big, uh, the big concern for city leaders in New Orleans. We've got 103 cases statewide in Louisiana, 75 of them in New Orleans, in Orleans Parish, which, just for a little background information, the city of New Orleans and Orleans Parish, the footprint is identical. Two deaths in the state, also both of those in New Orleans. Now, while the CDC has said, hey, no crowds more than 50, in Louisiana, keep in mind, this is a destination place. Uh, uh, you know, the, city, the mayor of New Orleans is saying, hey, no more than 250, but still, that's a problem. When you look at Bourbon Street, over the weekend, we had a situation where police essentially had to do a sweep of Bourbon Street and tell people, hey, you, you're in a crowd of more than 250 people. You're going to have to disperse. Uh, also, uh, there was a, a lot of parades have been canceled. A lot of uh, St. Patrick's Day parades have been canceled. And uh, while one of the big ones had the parade canceled, People who weren't going to be able to roll in the parade still decided they were going to go to the after party, whether it was official or not. So that we had a giant after party that the city flat out called irresponsible. So the city is doing what it can to try and crack down on things like this. Restaurants are being told, hey, reduce your seating by half. Tours are going to have to reduce the number of people that they take on the tours, even the walking tours through the French Quarter. Fast food restaurants, drive through only. And bars, keep in mind there are some bars, not many, but there are some bars that don't essentially even have doors because they're open all the time, right? So they're going to close at midnight, last call coming at 11.15. So there's a lot going on here. Kids are out of school until the middle of April. The schools, though, starting today in Orleans Parish and in other parishes uh, subsequently this week, many of them are going to go ahead and make the meals for the kids so the kids can get a good meal because a lot of parents, frankly, Frankly, here are counting on that breakfast and lunch even have you so guys talked there's a lot going on but go ahead Kurt. go ahead well I, I'm interested Sounds because this is such the Crescent City is such a, a place of of families of parties of get-togethers of Bourbon Street of doing all of these things is it gonna hurt tourism you think as people will not flock down to New Orleans to participate in some of what the Bayou is famous for well, it's a, it's a question of whether they, they cannot or, or, or won't or yeah. will be prohibited, you know. Keep in mind, Aaron, we're all, we're all watching the airports wondering what's going to happen next. We've had some flight restrictions, obviously, in and out of the country and such. So the question is, is there a point where hotels here decide, you know what? We're, we're going to go on a, a hiatus as well. Uh, we've, we have some businesses. In fact, uh, one of the major banks uh, here announced that it's going to have a couple locations be drive-through only, and it's going to actually put one entire location uh, on a hiatus altogether. But will that extend when you've got the restaurants already dialing things back? When you've got bars, which is why a lot of people come here, mm -hmm. when you've got the bars having to dial things back, the question is, does the tourism industry follow? The tours themselves, like I said, even the walking tours, normally have like 28 people, and I think they were told no more than seven people per uh, walking tour, which is, you know, a fourth of their business. Well, Kurt, you bring up a good thing about tours. Uh, I actually spent some time last week in Denver. I had to travel back on Friday. I was doing some Olympic uh, research, and I was at the Olympic facility in Colorado Springs. They canceled tours there. So this is not something that is just uh, tourism based this is just about everything and I know the sporting world is also big in New Orleans you got no more games down there for uh, for your big draw of basketball right now with one of the most uh, you know sought-after athletes in the world and I was one of the few people who was holding out hope that the Pelicans were going to make the playoffs. My coworkers don't believe me. But I will tell you this, is Zion Williamson, here he is, a 19-year-old kid, and he said, you know what, as a gesture, he was going to agree to pay the salaries mm. of the workers at Smoothie King Center who, uh, who weren't going to be able to work yeah. while this whole shutdown was going on. You want to talk so about maturity, Kurt. What's going on. That shows so much maturity from Zion. Yeah, absolutely. And he, you know, he, when, he, when he was drafted, we all thought we were going to have to take him under our wing because here he was, a kid, right? And in a way, he's kind of taking people under his wing. Yeah. All right, Kurt, thanks so much. Appreciate you spreading a little bit of wealth on what's happening uh, down in Louisiana. Let's shift over to Tennessee. Nashville is the heart and soul of the city. And, you know, there's a music and a bar scene there. The mayor, though, calling for bars and restaurants to close, but some say they won't until they're told by the governor himself. It's an ongoing battle, and the lines have been drawn. Stassi Olmos has the story. 
this is being applied uh, unequally and unconstitutionally to businesses on Lower Broad. Attorney Brian Lewis represents several bars on Broadway, including Tootsie's, Kid Rock's, Honky Tonk Central, and Rippies, and he says none of them will be closing. Certain bars and restaurants in Nashville do not have to shut down based upon the percentage of food they sell versus Lower Broad being targeted at this point. And we feel like that brings in equal protection implications under both the Tennessee and United States Constitution. Our main concern are our employees. We have over 800 plus employees, hundreds of musicians. If they're shutting down Broadway, that's the only way that we make our money is out of a tip jug. This is what we do. It's full time. It's the only thing that we do. And uh, my band and I, we play down here six days a week, and that's that's how we make our living. Now, other bars say they'll comply with the city's mandate, but many people will be hurting. We have a lot of a lot of wonderful staff that have families and homes to take care of and bills to pay. That's how they make their money. And we don't have a choice. If the city says to close, we will comply, but that doesn't mean we're happy about it. All the bars aren't very busy to begin with, so I don't think we should penalize our staff nor our musicians to totally close down all the bars and restaurants here. The mayor's asked restaurants across the city to allow only half their capacity. Now, these Broadway bars also serve food. Roberts is very well known for our grill. In fact, at night we are packed because people will only come in looking for food. Um, so that's something we could fight it because we pay taxes as a restaurant. What's the difference if a restaurant operates or a bar that operates? We should all be open or we should all be closed. And I don't think we should be closed whatsoever. Interesting story out of Nashville. Julia Palazzo joins us from Nashville. Julia, this is obviously something, you know, we just talked to Kurt in New Orleans. Now we shift over to Tennessee. You guys are known for having crowds of people and the coronavirus really kind of limiting that. Right. And even over the weekend, there was a video that went viral on Twitter um, of people shoulder to shoulder in one of the honky tonks and people were outraged that the bars weren't closed and then of course yesterday that changed um, you know the mayor encouraging them to um, and then this is basically what he said he said bars on lower Broadway and throughout Davidson County which is where Nashville is located um, should close their businesses until further notice restaurants public facilities where the sale of food compromises more than 50% of revenue should limit their seating and uh, bar service at restaurants should be limited to 50% of capacity with no standing allowed. So there's been a lot of mixed reaction from some of the bar owners. Some of them do want to keep their doors open, and then some of them have just shut down until further notice. Obviously, it's a difficult situation. It's one that everybody has to kind of weigh on their own until the government gets involved, until the governor, as in Stacy's story, uh, gets involved. Do you there in Tennessee think that that is something that is coming to where the governor of the state will start to limit gatherings, as the CDC says? It's got to be 50 or less in order to be really work against the coronavirus. I mean, it's possible the governor is starting to uh, talk a lot more this morning. We uh, just got a statement a little bit of an hour ago that he is encouraging all schools statewide to close. So, and then that is, of course, getting support from the Department of Education. Uh, that's breaking right now. Also, um, one of the bar owners is considering legal action against the city uh, to keep his bars and restaurants open. So the governor hasn't said anything, but I'm sure we will anticipate that probably today. I'm sure he'll have a response to it. Yeah, everybody seemed to get, be giving responses state by state uh, every day. Julia, thanks so much. All right, look, we all need happy things to make us smile. And how about something cute? How about a unicorn? Looking close at this, maybe not a unicorn, it's a dog named Ray, 12-week-old golden retriever, one ear on top of her head. Interesting. The story began at birth. Her mother was trying to tear her amniotic sac open and little Ray's ear was bitten off. To compensate, her other ear started growing towards the center of her head. In case you are wondering, yes, yeah, she hears just fine. And now she's a unicorn. Kind of a cute story. All right, that's all the time we have for this edition of Newsfeed. Now we'll do it all over again. 10.30, your start time tomorrow. See you then.